Grade 8 math, number 8.1e, solving a word problem. We're doing systems of linear equations. So we said before, when using graphs to solve a system of equations, it'll be a lot easier if we rewrite both equations in slope-intercept form. They're much easier to graph. And since the graph of an equation represents all the ordered pairs that are solutions of the equation, if a point lies on the graph of two equations, that point's a solution of both equations, and it's a solution of the system of equations. Okay? So, here's our word problem. Emma and her family went to a snack counter at the movie theater. And the theater charges $4 for a box of candy and $2 for a medium drink. The family buys a total of eight items for $24. So let's figure out how many boxes of candy and drinks they bought. So, we're going to let X equal the boxes of candy and Y equal the drinks. We need to write an equation to represent the number of items they bought. Well, it says they bought eight items for $24. The candy is $4, the drinks are $2. So, if X is the candy and Y are the drinks, X plus Y equals eight for the amount of items they bought, okay? So that totals the number of items they bought. Now we need to write an equation that represents the money that was spent on those items. And it says that they spent $24. So we know that the candy is $4, the drinks are $2, so that means 4x plus 2y equals $24 for the money spent. We need to write these two equations in slope-intercept form and then graph them. So we need to take this one and put it in slope-intercept form. So remember from the last video, the first thing we do, we subtract x from both sides. That's going to make this a zero pair and cancel out. Now we've got y equals 8 minus x. Well, this x needs to be on this side, and this 8 needs to be on that side in order to be in slope-intercept form. The x is right next to the slope and the equal sign, okay? And this 8 is the y-intercept. So we take the entire minus x and bring it up forward, and we take the entire positive 8 and bring it back. Now we've got our equation in slope-intercept form. Now we need to do it for the other equation. It says 4x plus 2y equals 24. First thing we do is subtract 4x from each side. That's going to create a zero pair there. And uh, now, on this side, we've got 24 minus 4x. We drop down this 2y. Now, to get the y by itself, as it should be in slope-intercept form, we've got to divide this entire equation by 2. When we do that, we get our friend, the invisible 1 here, so it's just a y. 24 divided by 2 is 12, and negative 4x divided by 2 is negative 2x. Well, this is the y-intercept, and this is the slope and the x value. They need to trade places. So this entire minus 2x comes forward, and this positive 12 comes back. All right? So now, the equations are in slope-intercept form. Here's our pink line. There's our blue line. Now we can graph them, okay? So this one is, remember, we've got an invisible 1 here, right? You remember that? There's an invisible 1 in front of that x. That's from video 6.2b in 6th grade, all right? We know that the, the y-intercept is a positive 8 for the pink line. So, I hope you can see this because these squares are kind of small, but here's a positive 8 on the pink line right here, okay? It's this spot right here, all right? And our slope is a negative 1. So, because it's negative, we know our line is going in this direction, right? Because it's a negative slope. And we know it's going to go down 1L, one box, like that, okay? So we go down one box. We come down one for our rise and one for our run, because it's a negative. We end up at the very corner of the same square. And when we draw a line through these two points, we get this pink line, okay? So now let's do the blue one. We know our y-intercept is at 12. So, here we are. Here's 12 right here. So that's our y-intercept. And we've got a negative 2 for a slope. So that means that our line is negative because it's a negative slope. It's also going this way, all right? And a negative 2 slope is the rise and run is negative 2 over 1, right? Because that makes a negative 2. So we need to go down 2 and over 1. So we go down 1. 2, and we go over 1, and that puts our point right here. 
So we draw our point, and then we've got our two points. We draw a line through it, and look. They cross each other and intersect right there. See? And can you see what that is? It's at 4, 4. That's the ordered pair. 4, 4. X is 4 and Y is 4. That's where they intersect. So that is going to be the solution to both of our equations. Let's find out. So we plug in this 4, 4 for X and Y in the first equation, and this was the equation. So now we've got 4 equals negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4, plus 8. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4. 4 equals 4. Yeah, it worked. Let's try it on this side. This was our other equation for the drinks. That was for the items. So we had this for our equation. Now we've got 4 equals negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8 plus 12. Negative 8 plus 12 is 4. Yep, 4 equals 4. Yep, it's a solution for the system of equations. So guess what? They bought four boxes of candy and four drinks. And you know what? If they bought each a box of candy and a drink, it says she went with her family. She must have gone with three members of her family and herself because they got four candies and four drinks. So it's probably four of them, right? We're not sure, but we could pretty well guess that that's probably what happened. All right? So we do know that four boxes of candy and four drinks were bought, though. All right? We're going to move on to Unit 8.2. And I hope to see you there. I hope this was helpful. Remember that slope-intercept form is easier to graph things, and you start by doing the y-intercept and then finding the slope, all right? I'll see you in 8.2a. Bye.